I have a little thing to say about a little side project I did. I have been using either Arduino IDE or Platform IO to program various Arduino compatible microcontrollers. But now I'm building my own boards and yes, I can make them Arduino compatible, but I decided I'd like to give up Platform IO and Arduino IDE and start using the IDEs that the, manu the chip manufacturers provide. So in the case of AVR chips, Microchip is now the manufacturer, and they have a couple IDEs. One is Atmel Studio, which does not run on a Mac, and I have a Mac, but I also have a Windows machine. So Atmel Studio and runs on a Windows machine, and it has their environment for programming all the chips that they, that they make. And what's nice about it is that it's all one integrated thing. And if your chip supports debugging, it will also do debugging. It's all integrated. The other thing that they have that does run on a Mac and Windows, and I think Linux, is MP Lab X, which is basically an updated version of Atmel Studio that's, well, it's, a, it's an, a parallel version that runs on more platforms. And the issues are, how do you program a device? So most Arduino boards, can, compatible boards, can only be programmed using the Arduino compatible bootloader, which is a piece of software that is pre-programmed by the board maker that listens on the USB serial port during reset. Basically, it allows Arduino IDE and Platform I.O. to program your sketch over USB, which is not natural for these chips. But the bootloader allows you to do that. Well, when you switch over to the world of microchip and their IDE, there's no concept of a bootloader. You use the programming pins on the chip with a programmer device and you download your code, no bootloader. Now you could download any code and you could download a bootloader and make it our make it Arduino compatible by putting an Arduino compatible bootloader on it. But basically when you're in microchips ecosystem, you don't do that. A consideration when you're designing a board for yourself is if you want to make it Arduino compatible and have it use a bootloader to load sketches over USB, it means you have to go through the trouble of putting a USB chip on the board and, you know, getting that working. So in a lot of cases, Boards are very specific in what they need to do, and you'll never need USB communication on the board for for its purposes, for its own purposes. So why bother putting a USB chip on the board just to program it when you can easily program it more directly? So like I said, most of the boards don't have a connector for a a, a real programmer device. But the Arduino Mega does. And it turns out AVR chips, really, it's just the SPI interface is used, can be, among other possibilities, the SPI interface can be used to program the chip. What happens is during reset, the chip can be put into a mode where it's being programmed as, a, as opposed to running, running what's already programmed. So there's a thing called an ICSP connector, and it's a six or 10 pin connector, but basically all it has is the SPI interface, MOSI, MISO, power, ground, and reset. So that's the, an ICSP connector has those pins brought out. Now on a regular Arduino board, if you have access to S the X SPI pins and reset on, on a header, you could jumper from a programmer's out pins 
to those header pins with separate jumper wires but it's nice to have a connector and it turns out that the 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 board that i've been using a lot lately or or the chip that i've been using is the at mega 2560 and i happen to have an arduino mega 2560 which is arduino's board that has that chip on it and it happens to have an icsp connector on it so with atmel studio you could buy any of a number of programmers that are inexpensive and i bought one that I think it's called AVR ISP MK2. Now it's a clone of that. That's not, I didn't buy the actual, I think that's an Atmel device, but this is a clone of it. And it will work with Atmel Studio and you just plug it into the ICSP connector and there you go, you can program the board. That's nice. So now I have a I had a way to experiment it with using Atmel Studio and programming that board. So when I designed my own 2560 board, I put an ICSP connector on version one of that board. But in order to use Atmel Studio, I have to use an old Windows laptop that I have, and I don't like that i'd like to use my mac laptop so i looked at well can i get that programmer usable with mp lab x on a mac and the answer is no it doesn't support that programmer so i looked at what kind of programs it supports and i went with for mp lab x i went with the newest one that i that i think they have which is that that would be compatible is the pick kit five now unfortunately i i chose the pick kit five because it's newer than the pick kit four the pick kit four if i had bought that would be compatible with avr dude so i could probably get it working with platform i and arduino ide but I didn't go with it because it was questionable whether that's being phased out. And so I went with the 5 and I received it. And what you get in the box is just the programmer and basically the programmer and a USB cable because it's a USB device. And it has a, a single line 8 pin female socket for its, for its controlling you know for its connection to a board the picket 5 itself supports many types of connectors and you know for target boards it's just different combinations of those eight pins on the picket 5 and in some cases different functions so those pins support icsp but or they call it avr isp but they don't provide an adapter you can't buy one adapter that goes from their single line eight pin female connector to a six a, a, a two by three box connector which is what an icsp connector looks like so here you go i i decided since i have time because i'm always waiting for parts or boards I designed a little adapter board. It, all it really is, is eight pin right angle header and a three, a two by three box, male box pin header. And the connections are simple from, from the one header to the other header. And, I, and here it is, I made a little circuit board. <laughs> Instead of, I could have just jumpered individual wires over, but that would always be a mess and inconvenient. Now I can use a nice ribbon cable to connect the programmer through the adapter to my board and the Arduino Mega. Now, that what I found was that in, in MP Lab X, when you say I want to use a PicKit 5, you get a choice to use it as a JTAG interface or an ISP interface. 
which I am also calling ICSP. So I looked into the JTAG interface and it turns out that the 2560 also has a JTAG interface that you can use to not only program the chip, I'm pretty sure you can program the chip through it, but also do on-chip debugging. So where the ICSP, which is an SPI route into the chip, will only allow you to read and write the chip's flash and the fuses, the JTAG port allows you to do debugging. And I would really like that. So version 2, here's a look at, here's a 3D view of version 2 of my 2560 board. It has a lot more header pins, headers on it. And it has not only an ICSP header, but a JTAG header. So that I can, if I desire, do debugging. And that's soon to be, you know, that board that is soon to come from the PCB house and soon to be assembled. And we'll see how that works out. But when I, the reason why I put both interfaces on the board is because the chip comes by default not enabling the JTAG interface. So you, you need some way to enable the JTAG interface, and that's done by setting a fuse. They call them a configuration pin or what a configuration bit. Using MPLAB X, the only way I see that I can program a configuration bit with a with a bare chip that just came from the manufacturer is through ICSP because that is on by the def by default. So I needed both headers. So Anyways, this is just an update to say, by the way, I got beyond, well, this is not, I'll say that in a different video, but basically, I got beyond wondering if my reflow oven was any good as, you know, to do things. I was able to build a board, and I'll show that in another video, but I'm moving on and designing yet another version of the board, but just a little bit about if if people would like to ever leave Arduino land, what you're up against or what you need to face when you're when you when it comes to hey I just built a board or I designed a board how do I program it you're going to need some kind of at least access for AVRs to the SPI pins and reset and the ICSP connector is a nice way to organize it so you can use a ribbon cable and using microchips IDEs and real microchip programmers makes it very convenient to program the device. And it gives you more options because the Picket 5 will also be useful to program other of microchips, microcontroller chips. So that's the video. It was a long video. I'm sorry, but thank you for listening.